Welcome to my classroom. I am Nestle. In this video, I shall try to explain how a concentration difference for chloride can produce an electrical potential difference between the two sides of the membrane. We know that for ions to be able to pass through the uh, cell membrane, or in other words, for an ion current to happen, two conditions must be provided. One is that there must be an ion channel for that ion. Two, there must be a driving force pushing the ion to pass through these channels by passive diffusion. Our force, this force, can be of two types. One is the chemical force. Chemical force is produced by the concentration difference of an ion, the difference between the concentrations in the extracellular and the intracellular fluid. So this is able to produce an electrical potential difference. For this, I'm going to make an experimental setup. What are the necessary conditions for this? One, we must have an ion with a concentration difference. Two, there must be an ion channel, there must be ion channels in the membrane for that ion, plus a companying ion must not be able to pass through the membrane. For chloride, our example, the accompanying ion is sodium. So let us start uh, the putting together our experimental design. Number one, we have a chloride concentration difference, chloride being in higher concentration in the extracellular fluid. Two, I have placed chloride channels on the cell membrane. Three, sodium, the accompanying ion. Chloride is a negatively charged, positively charged sodium is the accompanying ion, main ion in the extracellular fluid. We have no channels for sodium, so sodium will not be able to pass through the membrane. In addition to this, I need to express two more information. Uh, this chloride concentration difference under these conditions is going to create an electrical potential difference. So we do not want any electrical potential difference to be there before we start. We want to be sure that whatever electrical potential difference we record in the end of our experiment is only made by the chloride concentration difference. So I have placed uh, positively and negatively charged ions in equal numbers in the intracellular fluid and in the extracellular fluid. So these areas are neutral, electrically neutral. And more important than this, I have placed equal numbers of positive and negative charges on both sides of the membrane. The, this is important because any type of bioelectrical potential, including this one, takes place only in a small area in the neighborhood of the cell membrane. So the design, the setup is here and now we can start. So we have a ion channel and we have a concentration difference for chloride. So the concentration difference is going to push chloride toward the intracellular area. Now I am going to use arrows to express the forces and I have color coded them. Black uh, arrows are representing the chemical driving force. Um, yellow is going to represent the electrical force and green is going to represent the net force, the summation of these two, which is the net electrochemical driving force. So at the beginning we have a concentration difference for chloride. We have a concentration difference for chloride and this is going to push chloride through the chloride channels into the cell. Uh, at this time there is no electrical, there is no electrical force because we don't want any electrical force in the beginning. What is the net electrochemical force? It is at this at the beginning point it is equal to the chemical force. Now let us put chloride ions in with this. I take one negatively charged from here to here and the accompanying positively charged ion will not be able to pass because there are no channels. So we see here that there is an electrical, uh, there it, 
uh, an electrical potential difference has formed between the two sides of the membrane. At this point, I must stress on two important rules. One is that the negatively charged chlorides do, ions do not move towards the interior of the cell or the positively charged sodium ions do not move away toward, towards the rest of the extracellular fluid because through the cell membrane they are pulling each other, electrically attracting each other and so they stick to both sides of the membrane. The second is information is that the these events are happening in a very limited area around the membrane. So the rest of the intracellular and extracellular fluid is not affected. Uh, plus the number of ions, if you will remember from the basic information video, the number of ions that move to produce ionic current is big enough to produce an electrical potential difference, but it is not big enough to produce any change in the concentrations in the outside or in the inside. So, now an electrical force has formed. This electric, if you have a look at this electrical force, the negative side of this potential difference is on the inner side of the membrane. Chloride is also negatively charged, so this force is going to push chloride outward. What happened to the chemical force is a bit tricky. We said that the number of ions that change place moving from the in outer side to inner side of the membrane does not affect the concentration difference. So our concentration force, the chemical force, is going to stay the same. What about the net force? Net force is going to be a little bit smaller because now well, we have an electrical force in the opposite direction. If you have a look at this condition, we still see that there is uh, an, an, an inwardly directing driving force for chloride. So more chloride ions are going to enter the cell, but the positively charged sodium ions, because they do not have an ion channel, are not able to pass. And the electrical potential difference between the two sides of the membrane increase. So now we have a bigger electrical force. As usual question, what happens to the chemical force? It does not change. The chemical force does not change because the concentration difference does not change. The electrical force increases and because of this, the net electrochemical force, which is shown in green, is going to decrease. But still there is some force pushing uh, so a net force pushing chloride into the cell. Let, so more chloride moves in, sodium ions are not able to follow, and our electrical force grows bigger. And as usual, as for sodium, potassium, and chloride, the chemical force does not change, it is of the same amplitude, but at the same time that the electrical force grows, net electrochemical force gets smaller. So how, how, much, how many steps do we need? When does this stop? When will the movement of chloride stop? It is going to stop when the, cons the size of the amplitude of the concentration force becomes equal to the size of the electrical force. At this point, what will be the net force? The net force, electrochemical force is zero. So we are not going to have any movement of, any net movement of sodium across the, excuse me, chloride across the membrane here. So, we have reached an equilibrium condition. This is an equilibrium condition and the electrical potential difference here is called either Nernst potential or equilibrium potential. What happened here is that at the beginning we had a concentration force. This concentration force through the chloride channels was able to produce an electrical potential difference between the two sides of the membrane which is equal in size to the chemical force. So this way we have converted millimolars of 
chemical force into millivolts of electrical force. This is called, and nice here we have put together by uh, an experimental design to see how chloride can form its nanced potential. The name includes potential and it's a bit confusing for students. Uh, whenever you see nanced potential, please, please, please do not think that this is an electrical potential. It is actually an electrical reflection of the chemical force, the concentration difference. The, between the internal and external concentrations of chloride. This is all I want to explain. I hope it has been useful. Thank you for watching.